Oh hey guys, I didn't see you there. I was just browsing my favorite chat channel on Marvel Future Fight, channel 999. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex, and today we're gonna be talking about stat caps. These are the maximum values that you can have for different stats that are percentages in the game. So when you go to the details page on any character, you get this slew of information. What we're talking about today are the percentage stats that I'm going to list for you. We're talking about attack speed, crit rate, crit damage, ignore defense, formerly known as defense penetration, Prince, rest in peace, ignore dodge, and then on the other side, we're talking about recovery rate, and dodge, and the resistances, fire, cold, lightning, mind, and poison. And then at the bottom under debuff on the bottom right corner, we are talking about movement speed, reduced debuff duration, which was uh, formerly known as cool, or sorry, uh, control time, crowd control time. And then the last one, probably the most important, reduce cooldown duration, which everybody calls skill cooldown. So a few of these have different names, but we know them uh, by what they do for us in the game. All of these stats have an impact on how your character plays from the damage output to how fast you can rotate skills to your survivability. So it's important to have those numbers be high numbers and not low numbers. None of these numbers here do you want to have in small quantities. But it's really important to know how much of a stat you need because you don't want to spend all of your resources, roll all of your cards and your obelisks and your gear for one particular stat because it is important. But if you're way over the cap, then you're just being inefficient and then you, you're not using those points and those stats and those options for other stats to balance out your character. So it's really important and it's, it's good to strive to maximize all of these numbers but it's also important to balance them out. It's not really uh, effective to just have one very high and the rest really low. In a lot of instances, it's better to have kind of an even keel. So we're gonna talk about the maximum values for each stat. I'm gonna list them off for you guys. We're gonna list them on the screen. And then I'm gonna talk about ways that you get them natively so that you can remember those things and take them down from the, the maximum uh, cap for each stat. So from the top, guys, attack speed is capped at 130%. As you can see there, my Doctor Strange has more than 30% right now. Uh, but because the cap is 130, it does not show. Unfortunately, guys, for whatever reason, the details page does not show you how much you are over the cap. But if you go through each position and you add up the numbers, thank you for the dimension rift, or sorry, for the clear tickets. Uh, if you add up the numbers, you will see that... Uh, you will be over the cap in certain situations. So attack speed is capped at 130%. Crit rate is capped at 75%. Crit damage, however, is capped at 200%. Ignore defense is capped at 50%. As we can see here, Doctor Strange is a good example. I have 12% on my gear, plus 8%, that's 20 and change, plus 32 is 52 and change. So I have more than 50%, but it's only showing 50%, so we can confirm for sure that ignore defense or defense penetration caps at 50%. Ignore dodge supposedly caps at 75%, but from my testing, at least uh, from the visual, you can see that if you put someone like Kate Bishop, who in my case has 45% ignore dodge, and you give her a leadership like Bullseye or Robbie Reyes, who you guys are loving lately, uh, who has a 50% dodge ignore leadership, her dodge ignore goes all the way up to 95%. So I'm speculating that the dodge ignore cap is 100%, but because dodge and other similar stats are, are capped at 75%, this may be a visual bug, and it wouldn't make sense for ignore dodge to go over 100%, but it may as well be possible. Moving on, guys, to the next stat on the list, guys. Recovery rate is capped at 250%. So if you take a look, for example, at my uh, tier two Groot, I have over 250%, but it maxes out at that value for the stat recovery rate. So you can see there under HP, it's capped at 250. But if you add up all of my recovery rate from my gear and my cards and how much recovery rate Groot has natively, I'm over 250%, but the cap in this case is 250% for recovery rate. Dodge, on the other hand, is capped at 75%, guys. Then the resistances are capped at 200%, although I don't know why you would ever need 200% of any resistances for now. 
And then at the bottom, guys, movement speed is capped at 130%, similar to attack speed. Reduced debuff duration is capped at 75%. Reduced debuff duration in this case is when you get debuffed by time freeze or charm or snare or fear. The amount of time that you get debuffed for will lower if your reduced debuff duration is higher, up to 75%. That reduces it by 3 fourths, which is pretty handy. And then reduced cooldown duration is capped at 50%. However, you will see, guys, and this is where the confusion comes in, that some of my stats, for example, reduce cooldown duration, skill cooldown, I don't have 50% with Doctor Strange. I only have 36%. And you'll see some of the other stats where it doesn't seem to be capped, yet I'm not doing anything to try and cap that stat. The reason for that is your alliance. Your alliance level matters because of the alliance bonus. The alliance bonus will confer on you a 14% bonus to four very important stats, crit damage, crit rate, dodge, and skill cooldown. So now, even though the cap for skill cooldown is 50%, you only want a maximum of 36% on your details page because the details page doesn't take into consideration, it doesn't add up the alliance bonus. If you're in a low level alliance, obviously these numbers will fluctuate, but the aim, the goal is to get to a level 30 alliance so you can have that amazing 14%. Similarly, even though crit rate is technically capped at 75, the new number that you should aim for if you want to cap your crit rate is 61%. If you're seeing more than 61% in the details page, what you're doing is you're just overkilling it. You're overshooting the value. That's only good if you're expecting to get debuffed. The debuff meta is really not that strong right now, so I wouldn't recommend it. Similarly with crit damage, you only want to aim for a maximum of 186%. Keep in mind that your number will actually be a lot lower if you have team up bonuses, leaderships, or tier two passives that interact with your crit damage or crit rate. For example, Doctor Strange here has 182% crit damage. That's almost at the cap because I'm at I need to be at 186%. However, I, use, I do use uh, I used to use at least Warwolf, who confers a crit damage and crit rate bonus to all allies. So now you can see that Doctor Strange's crit rate and crit damage have improved and his crit damage is well above the cap because it's going over 200% we know. And then on top of that, the Alliance bonus is adding another 14. So I'm probably close to like 220% way overkill in this case. But sometimes because you don't have the optimal team set up every single time, it is good to be a little bit higher than the norm. Similarly, guys, with dodge dodge is capped at 75 percent not guaranteed dodge guys just regular dodge but because of the 14 percent bonus in all game modes you only want to aim for 61 percent now that only covers those four stats and while they are important they are not the only stats that you need to aim for you do also want to try and aim for as much as you as you possibly can 50 percent ignore defense that's really going to scale up your damage especially against hard enemies like world bosses and frost beasts so that's a really important stat to try and cap i would say the two most important stats to cap right now are reduced cooldown duration or skill cooldown which your alliance helps you with and ignore defense or uh, defense penetration so for defense penetration you need to find the full 50 percent for skill cooldown you only need to find 36 percent from your gear which includes like the, the four slots that you have here on the side uh, and then your card stats because your card values get added up and then your ISO 8 set if you have Hawk's Eye or Power of Angry Hulk or Overdrive, something like that. So you want to aim for 50% ignore defense, 36% skill cooldown, granted that you're in a top level uh, 30 level alliance, level 30 alliance. And then the other stats are where things get a little bit dicey, a little bit jack dicey. So a lot of people really enjoy uh, high attack speed because it allows you to rotate through your skills faster. The cap for attack speed is 130% and it's quite difficult to get uh, on certain stats. So you do need to kind of plan ahead for it. I think it's probably easiest to get attack speed from your cards. However, that might be difficult uh, if you don't have very good cards. You can also try and get it on an ISO 8 set like Power of Angry Hulk. But again, that's kind of up to RNG. You can also roll attack speed on your gear. Just keep in mind that different gear options, different stats have different values for how many points you need for 1%. So 
So what that means is the game takes these values, so let's say attack speed 346%, and it turns that 346% into, or that 346 number into a percentage. So that 346 is probably only about one and a half percent, let's say, that's, that's my example. But that 346 number, if it was ignore defense, it might be 2% ignore defense or 3% ignore defense. So not every stat is given the same weight because you can think about it logically, you only need to get 30% attack speed to get from the baseline of 100 to the top of 130. So because there's only 30% to get to, they need to overvalue each 1% increase because you only need to go from 0 to 30. However, with Ignore Defense, you have to go from zero, the baseline, to 50%. So there's a much higher, there's 20, 20 points more, 20 percentage points more you need to attain. So your points go further with certain stats than with other stats. So obviously your points don't go very far with attack speed or if we had it movement speed, but we don't. Your points will go a lot further for things like crit damage and Ignore Defense. They won't go as far for crit damage or dodge because they're capped at 75, but they will go pretty far. You will see also more of an impact on your DPS from ignore defense than you will from crit rate. That's why although 75 is higher than 50, people overvalue defense penetration compared to crit rate, and rightfully so, guys. Another thing you guys need to take into consideration is your team-up bonuses and your leaderships because those will affect your numbers. So as you can see here, Doctor Strange has 50% uh, ignore dodge because of Robbie Reyes' leadership. If I change this now, Doctor Strange confirms on himself a 20% and the team for his leadership a 20% ignore dodge. So my ignore dodge has dropped from 50 to 20%. That's also the same for the, the regular physical and energy attack stats. But another thing you guys need to take into consideration is the world boss day. So for example, my Doctor Strange actually does not have max attack speed. I think I'm at 126% right now from my cards, my gear, my uniform, and my ISO 8 stat. However, it says here he's at 130%. The reason for that is today is Proxima's day. And as you can see here in the top corner, the world boss clear effect is 10% all speed. This does count. This does add up to your character's values. So if we go over to a character that I never invested in, let's say, oh, I don't know, hmm, Hulkling. We can see in the details page, he's got 121% attack speed. Now my cards only give 10%. My ISO 8, I don't have one. My gear, he doesn't have any. But curiously, he has 121%. That's because of the Proxima bonus from the world boss clear effect. So that's another thing you need to take into consideration. A lot of people like to do Shadowlands on the Infinity Thanos clear day, Saturday for the East Coast people, because it confers a 10% all attack bonus. But those different bonuses on each day, dodge, you know, reduce cooldown duration, reduce crowd control time, etc. Those do add up to your character's stats. They will appear in the details page. So you do need to keep that in mind. If you're seeing the 130 and you think, oh, I hit the skill cap for attack speed, the stat cap, mm, tomorrow you won't be at the stat cap anymore. So take that into consideration as well, guys. Probably the easiest way overall to improve your stats in those areas are either from obelisks and uniforms, because you do get to choose and you can get very, very high numbers. As you guys can see, there are 1,000 points into ignore defense. But obviously, the number one place to improve those stats is from your cards. Probably the most difficult place to do so because of how uh, difficult it is and random it is to roll different card stats, but ideally you want card stats that will improve those stats as much as you can. So you want to aim for at least 20% cooldown on your cards because coupled with the 14%, you're already close to 40. You obviously want to be at 50, so you might need it to be a little bit higher, but keep in mind that your characters have skill cooldown native on their gear most of the time. Ignore defense, again, you want to aim for at least 10 or 15%, but the more the better because then you don't need to have it on your other gear options like obelisks and ISO 8 sets. Again, attack speed, the more the better. Everyone starts at 100%, 130 is the max, and your alliance doesn't help you this time. So 10% is okay, 20% is great, above 20% is fantastic. Crit rate is not as important to get because again, your cap is 75 and your alliance automatically brings you up 
to 14% out of that 75, and you will have some natively on your gear for most characters. However, because the crit damage cap is so much higher, it's 200% minus the 14% from your alliance, it is important to try and get some crit damage on your cards. The other stats I talked about, dodge, you can't really roll for movement speed. I mean, you can roll for movement speed, but it's unlikely. Uh, recovery rate, uh, reduced debuff duration. They're not as important to get, guys. I mean, there are some players that swear by uh, movement speed, and I do see the value in movement speed. I just can't uh, confidently recommend you to try and roll for movement speed because you're going to end up spending a lot of resources that you may or may not have, and you might be disappointed with your results overall if you prioritize movement speed over some of the more important stats that we covered, guys. So let me know what you think of this. Let me know, uh, you know, how your characters are doing in terms of their skill caps and their stat caps. How many of your characters are hitting the caps, and if you were missing some or if you were overshooting some of them, you know, how how will you address that uh, issue? Thank you guys so much for watching, and of course, guys, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.